Hi everyone, hi everyone. This is Alice Koinange. We are live talking about this coronavirus. Let me see. There we go, I see some people are logging in. Hi, Prophet Brian. I'll give people two, one more minute to log in and we can talk about this coronavirus issue that I'm having right now. All right, I see Evangelist Millicent, hi. Diana Jones. <laughs> All right, well, just a few more minutes to let people log in. Then we can talk about this. We can demystify this coronavirus that we are hearing about everywhere. I don't have my glasses, so I can't really see, but I see a lot of people are logging in. Hi everyone, thanks for logging in. Oh, I'm short of breath. My name is Alice Koinange, and um, I wanted to come in live to talk to everyone, talk to my friends on Facebook. Please share, tag someone, so we can talk about this coronavirus that's been a pandemic. Since I am now living with it, I am positive. Wanted to share some facts. I know there's a lot of stuff going out there, people giving stories who are maybe not living it, a lot of skepticism, and I wanted to share how I'm living with this coronavirus, this COVID-2019. So I'm a little bit short of breath. As many of you know, this coronavirus affects the lungs and breathing, and that's one of the issues I'm having right now. So just wanted to let you know how I found out about being positive. So a couple of weeks, um, I think it was a week and a half ago, I started getting short of breath and I started making excuses. So one of the things that I want everyone to know is the symptoms to look for. There's so many symptoms that you may not be hearing about from CDC and I want to let you know what I'm going through. So it started with headaches. I started having these really bad headaches and pain on my neck. And I made the excuse, I said, uh, maybe it's my migraines, I'm stressed out, you know, work and life. And I started taking um, my migraine medication, but the headaches kept coming, kept coming, kept coming. I went to see my doctor and the doctor said, oh, let me give you another medication for um, headaches. We'll see if it goes away. At that point, I was not coughing. I didn't have any um, temperature, I didn't have any fever. So a few days after that, I started feeling short of breath again, more short of breath. And I do have asthma, so, and I started working out. So I made the excuse, oh, it's my exercise induced asthma. So I'm just short of breath, um, you know? So I got my inhaler, I always carry my inhaler everywhere I go. So I have my inhaler right here. So I use my inhaler to, you know, vasodilate to open up my lungs so I can stop having all this, you know, short of breath, like I was trying to catch my breath. And then I started feeling tired, really, really tired. So I went to work. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm really getting tired, but I'm sleeping well, but I just feel like I'm exhausted. I've got this fatigue. And then I started coughing, 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 sore throat. This is like in a span of four or five days. So what I want everyone to know is you need to listen to your body. Don't make excuses. Even if you have a pre-existing issue, allergies, asthma, whatever, just listen to your body. So I started having sore throat, coughing, and I said, oh my gosh, it's allergy season in Dallas, you know? All these flowers are blossoming. It must be the allergy medication that I need. So I started taking my allergy medication, I said, you're using my Flonase. And then I started feeling worse and worse and worse. Then I said, what is this that's going on? Then neck pain. Then at night, it was on um, Monday night, last week, Monday night. 
I was really, really sweating. I was short of breath. I told my husband, um, I have to turn on the, the bedroom fan because I couldn't breathe. And I had to put the fan on high and we put the AC on, the upstairs AC, because we have two different settings for temperature. So the kids were like, mom, it's really cold. I told my husband, I can't breathe. My husband was like, this room is too cold. So he moved out to the guest room and I couldn't catch my breath. I couldn't catch my breath around three, four in the morning. I woke up to go use the bathroom. I was sweating. I was like sweating, drenching, like sweating. So I was like, something's wrong. Then I said, oh, I guess, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, something's going on, you know? I just made an excuse. So I woke up in the morning and I went to work. I couldn't even come out of the car. I started saying, oh my God, something is really wrong. I used my inhaler again and I said, oh, let me just go in and I'll go to the ER because I'm a veteran and I work at the VA hospital. So I started getting worse. I said, and I was dressed up. I sat on the floor. I couldn't catch a breath. Fast forward, fast forward. Um, the call rapid response because I couldn't breathe. Then I started crying because I was like trying to gasp for air. So they took me to the ER. And then the doctor said, ask me all these questions. And um, they said, you have all these symptoms. They listened to my lungs. My lungs were clear. I didn't have any fever which is one of the things they ask. Have you traveled out of the country? Do you have any fever? I didn't have any fever. So I was still coughing, I was coughing. So they gave me a mask, so I, I got a mask. And then they checked me and then the doctor said, this is different, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna swab you for um, this COVID-19 because you have so many symptoms. That time my heart rate was up, my, my blood pressure was high. So I called my husband and I told him what was going on. So fast forward, I'm at home. Um, that was Tuesday. Wednesday, I'm home. So the, the doctor said, um, we, you need to self-quarantine until we get the results because we're gonna send the results to UT Southwestern Hospital. So um, I got home on Wednesday. I started feeling nauseous, like I wanna throw up. So the headache is still there. So I'm taking headache medication. I'm aching everywhere. My fingers were hurting me. My toes were hurting me. So I started feeling nauseous. I'm like, something's so wrong. So now I self-quarantined. I was upstairs. I was in my room by myself. And then I came to the game room just to be alone because I didn't want to um, contaminate the, the family. I didn't want them to, to pick anything. And then Thursday, I started having diarrhea, you know, like the runs, like the really bad runs. So that's another symptom. I started having nausea and then the runs. Then I started feeling like I want to throw up, then I don't want to throw up. I want to throw up, I don't want to throw up. And I was, I was like still sweating, sweating, feeling really, really sick. And then Thursday, the same thing. I started losing um, uh, like sense of smell. It's like every day something else was adding up, something else was adding up. So Friday morning, I got a call from um, the health department. So the health department, Collin County um, Health Department called me. I hadn't, the doc, my doctor hadn't called me. So they asked me, what's your, uh, they, they asked me my name and then they said, you know, um, telling me that I tested positive for COVID-19, that I need to be self-quarantined, they started asking me all these questions. And then at the same time, my military unit medical uh, squadron called me. My leadership called me from the military. And then I work for infectious diseases. I started getting calls from the VA. It's like all the systems started speaking. And now everyone was concerned. So um, the health department asked me uh, who, I got, who I was in touch with in the last 14 days. I'm like, I don't even know what I ate for lunch yesterday. I can't even remember who I was the, um, in touch with, who I, I saw. So that was the story. And um, so that was Friday, three, three days ago. So today is day four on um, self-quarantine. On, on self so I wanted to let you know with the testing, they had this thing that they pushed into my nose all the way up to my to my um, almost to my eye that's how they they tested me and for my test 
it took three days because I was tested on Tuesday. So I had to wait for those three days to get the test. Although I hear now there are people who are getting um, like rapid or instant one hour testing. Uh, that's what I'm hearing. So I just want the, the whole world to know that this COVID thing is real. What we're watching on CNN and all these that you're hearing in um, all over the world, in Europe, in here in, in, in China is real. Some people are saying, making excuses. No, it's not real. But since all of you guys are my Facebook page, friends and friends of friends, I want you to know this is real. This thing is a killer and it just goes for your lungs. Don't make any, any excuses. Listen to your body. And if you have like on, um, on Saturday, morning around two o'clock i couldn't breathe so I, I i called my husband i was screaming i was like honey come and take me to the er so i went to the er that was the day before yesterday they um so they said you have to call before you go to the er and tell them you have coronavirus so my husband dropped me and um they told him you need to stay away and um they put me in this negative pressure room so this negative pressure room um, it's kind of like it doesn't allow the, the the air to go out so the doctors and the nurses can come in or the technician or everyone anyone can come in so they were dressed like they were going to space I'm telling you they had let me show you what they had they had uh, oh gosh so they had this um, N95 which I have and then um, they also wore this on top of that and then they had a face shield, which I don't have. And they were double gloving. So that was, you know, what they, they, they had to protect themselves. And I was, now I'm st I've been coughing and coughing and coughing and it's getting worse at night. I'm like sweating and sweating. And by the way, I feel good now that I took a good shower and dressed up and put makeup because I've been wearing pajamas. So I just want everyone to to also just for self just to feel good because I've been feeling really bad really really awful I, I haven't been eating well and I've been thirsty dehydrated really really I was like I've been drinking like um, 15 bottles of water like almost every day and that day when I went to the ER this uh, past Saturday the day before yesterday yesterday um, they um, they did a chest x-ray and they said I had um, some some fluid in my lung and mucus so the, the problem is I've been so short of breath that I've just been lying down. So I want you to know that they told me not to lie down because when you lie on your back, um, that's where the, 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 you know, the, the lungs are in the front and the back, but the majority of the lung is in the back because you have the diaphragm and the rib cage. So they told me to start um, sleeping on my stomach so I can create a better airway for myself. So um, when the chest, they did the chest X-ray, that's what they said, because if I continue sleeping on my back, um, I'll continue having fluid and all this mucus, and then the next thing is the vent, and I'm not trying to get intubated. I'm not trying to be in the in the to get admitted and to be put in a vent. So they also advise me on breathing techniques that every hour. I need to, so I set my alarm clock every hour. I need to breathe, like you take a deep breath and then you breathe out. So there are specific breathing techniques to help with, you know, like opening up the, um, the, the, the ar um, areoles in the, in the lung, like the airways and those small, small, you know, things in the lungs. So just wanted to let you know that even if you have COVID, this coronavirus, you will live um, they're saying statistics, not everyone is getting to the point where they, they have to be admitted to hospital. So I wanted to come here and let everyone know that um, you can self-quarantine. You need to check for those symptoms that I gave you, that I told you, and just take care of yourself. Um, do hand hygiene, and if you're on um, um, self-quarantine, like I'm now on isolation, don't share the bathroom with your family members and just really avoid them. Do that, whatever they're telling you, social distancing. I've been watching TV, watching all these um, 
videos I'm getting, people are still not observing social distancing. For real, you need to observe social distancing. This thing is droplet. Like now I'm speaking, it's like they say even if I'm not speeding, you still um, speed, there's still like small droplets coming out. So you could be speaking to someone and just transmitting this, this virus. So social distancing, stay away. Stay away from people. If you don't have to be at work now, a lot of people are teleworking. You just need to telework. And if you're going to the supermarket, I've seen people like last, they asked me, where did you go? I didn't even think that I could be having coronavirus. So I went to, to the stores to buy food. So you really need to avoid going to the stores. If you're gonna do shopping for your family, oh my God, hold on. If you're gonna do shopping for your family, you need to, you need to um, just cluster, cluster your 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 care like uh, not clear care. What do you say? Cluster your shopping, like go shopping once a week. Don't just go with your whole family. I'm seeing people with husband, wife, and kids. W what are you going with your whole family for? You know, just go by yourself. This thing is real. Goes if you can't breathe, you can't leave. So. If you're going shopping, like wash your hands. If you have gloves, put on your gloves, clean every area, go do what you need to do there and get out. And avoid places. If you don't have to be out there, don't be out there because a lot of people are asymptomatic. Can you imagine for that week and a half and God knows how much farther back I may have been having the virus, giving it to people maybe not even knowing and it just growing and growing in my body to the point where now I'm like incapacitated that I can't breathe, I'm on the floor. And many of you know me, I'm really strong. And to the point where I was like feeling like death and gloom. So please listen to your body, social distancing, wash your hands. If you, if you have all these masks that people are making, put it on. It's for yourself and for saving other people. So put on the mask. People are sewing all these nice masks and they're improvising. So um, improvise also. And um, I want you to know that um, the health department will keep checking on you. Like for me, they've been calling me every single day, every day. And my military medical squadron has been calling me every day. My leadership has been checking on me, um, checking about um, the different symptoms. So the symptoms keep getting worse. For me, it's like uh, moderate to severe symptoms. So just listen to your body, be careful, and know this thing is real. So I just um, want to let you know there's hope. Hope. Right now, uh, we're missing that social you know, contact we've been having. Churches are closed. People are not working. Um, jobs, people have lost their jobs or um, are not going to work. So we're missing that human thing that we always communicate and, and touch each other and all that. So I just want everyone to know that there's hope. I want to demystify this thing. And if you're going through all these symptoms of some of them or even one of them and uh, check your temperature. And I have a pulse ox to check my oxygen. So, um, but don't let that be the thing that you're looking for, like um, fever, because you might not be having a fever. So um, I want to, to know that um, for me, as many of you know, I'm a Christian, I'm a minister of the gospel, that um, what is making me stronger since right now I'm on quarantine, I've, I haven't gone outside, I can't go outside. Um, the, the health department said I need to put a, a, a sign on the door so people cannot come in so if they're coming they can drop what they need to drop and leave and i've had family members and church members and friends drop me things you know food and stuff so i i thank everyone take care of your loved ones out there if you hear someone is sick don't be too scared i know we are all scared of this thing but you know if you protect yourself we all protect each other you know um we can minimize the spread and uh we all need love so um Love, love, continue loving us, the ones who are sick. Um, I, I'm still gonna, today's day four, so um, I have many, many days to be home, and they said um, they're not gonna let me leave the house um, until I test negative, I think two times. So um, this, this virus, there's no cure, and there's no vaccine. 
there's no medicine so be careful and i hope i've demystified a little bit about this coronavirus and i'll keep letting you guys know how i'm coping i'm hoping to do another live show on wednesday just to let you know um how i'm coping with being quarantined my family and the challenges i'm having i've been a little bit you know depressed just you know being here by myself but i've got a lot of calls and people um texting me calling me if i can't pick the call please forgive me i've been like short of breath like now thank god i'd also had uh, my nebulizer treatments and um my inhaler i can't overdo it it's not that i'm avoiding people but it's the breathing part so and the fatigue so i can't overexert myself so thank you for 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 joining and i hope um you guys now know about the testing if you feel you're sick go get tested um here at least i know stateside i don't know how the system is working but um they're letting some people get tested so um ask to be tested and look out for those symptoms and observe what CDC is saying, social distancing, and this thing is real. And um, lean on God. Know that, you know, God is there. Let's continue praying for each other. Let's continue knowing that he, you know, as people are saying, where, where is God? God is still here. God is still here. In the midst of all this, God is still here. And he's still Jehovah Rapha. He's still our healer. And I, I asked myself, people are telling me, oh my God, you're a minister. How is this happening? This can touch everyone. So there's no excuse. Don't think that you're immune. And I'm telling you, I tried to do everything right, but this thing got me. So be careful and just continue praying and, and just love each other. Let's check on each other and know that, you know, God is still there and there's still hope. So that was the word. There's still hope. And uh, we'll talk again on wednesday please ask questions i'll go back and see some of the questions you had and um we'll talk about them on wednesday and i'll tell you some of the things that we can do hand washing remember and um some of the questions and some of the things that the health department is asking me every day so that you can also know for a fact like from a person who's living it right now so god bless you thank you for joining me I appreciate you, Alice Koinange from Dallas. Thank you for making my day. At least I got to put some makeup and smile a little bit. And um, at least I hope I demystified this coronavirus um, to many of you. So thank you so much, um, all of you, for joining in. And we shall talk soon. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye. I'll post uh, to let you know on Wednesday when we're going to meet. All right. Bye. God bless you.